Seven years ago, I started a company. I was at the end of my bachelor's degree. I was young, I was naive, but definitely ready to find whatever comes up next. It's an ent entrepreneurial journey, a challenge, but so far, I love it. I decided to consult companies how to attract, recruit young talents, and also how to lead young talents, and especially also how to sell to a younger audience. So far, I had the time of my life. I can definitely say it was one of the best decisions of my life. And of course, besides getting together with my girlfriend, Anina, I also promised her to say that as well. <laughs> She's watching from her holidays. Um, yeah, so you know, you ask yourself, how will it be? In the beginning, you're alone, but then you start to grow a team. Do you love it? Do you like it? Or how will it be? I can tell you I love working for my company, I love working in my company and with everyone around it. But when I talk to friends or just to other people, sometimes I realize when they say, ah, I don't like it so much, it's not the work or the task at hand. It's usually the dynamics, the communication, um, just the mindset at the workplace or maybe in one word, the culture. So I think we need to get serious. We should start creating the right culture because that's something we hear a lot, right? We would say, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Sounds good, sounds nice, sounds maybe clever, but are we really getting serious about it? Because what I also realized is when companies are successful, it's usually because they have a great culture. That's what brings teams to the full potential. So let's start cooking then. Let's start cooking our culture. Culture is something that we should take seriously. Management teams would say, but yeah, Yannick, you know, it is what it is. You can't really change it. They would tell you, ah, you know, it's difficult. We can't do anything. Or they would just say, yes, we have a set of values defined in our company. But then I tell them, to be fully honest, your values, these are just the hopes and dreams of your top management team. But the culture is what is really how it is and how it feels like from the bottom up. So let's think about it, especially in today's time, where we say, hey, we're looking for the next big talent, we're looking for enough people, and culture is not only important, by the way, for young people, it's actually important for everyone in our organizations. And I also want to mention here that organizations shouldn't just be companies, it can also be your sports club, it can be your music band, it can be even your family, or whatever you have there. So, you know, in the last seven years, I really had to reflect myself, you know. Now, with 35 people, you are the CEO, you're responsible for everything. But on the one hand, we were building up our own company, and on the other ha hand, we were, of course, consulting companies. And with over 500 projects and now 35 people, I also realized, hey, something we do every day is really dive deep into our culture, we discuss it, we challenge it, and really think about, okay, what's next? Because I think it's nice to do that every day and not just have it as a checkbox on your agenda. What we have to think about are three global trends, because I think that really influences how we think and how we act within our companies and realize, hey, we have to do something. First of all, the labor market. The labor market has definitely changed. You know, baby boomers are getting out of the job market. Of course, they did a great job, but these are a lot of people, a lot of leadership people. So we have younger people getting in, but there are not so many. So we will have a challenge having enough people. So this will stay probably for a little bit. Second point, as I already mentioned before, Gen Z, this young generation, is able to look longer for the right context to work. They are able to search and find and think about, do I like it or not? And we all heard it, right? It's a generation that maybe uh, that we might say, ooh, young people, they don't want to work anymore, right? They're not so motivated. Probably something we always said about every young generation. And to be also fully honest, we have 35 people of Generation Y and Z, where people say, ah, oh, do they want to work? Well, we definitely proved them wrong. And technology, right? I mean, we've seen what happened in the last months, and we will probably expect what's changing. And I would say it changes everything, or at least it will change a lot, and especially changes how we communicate, how we interact, and how we collaborate. So now what we're doing in the next 
12 months, what can you take away? I think, first of all, think about who are you bringing in into the team. Our principle is hire for culture and not for skills. It's always easy to say, yeah, we need someone, let's bring him or her on the team. But you know, when you grow a team, whatever it is, you have eight, nine great people, they work together, they have a great culture. But what happens? The tenth hiring maybe isn't so good. And then you don't have 10 people, you maybe have five people then, because the rest says, oh, that's not for me, I'm going to leave. When we grew in 2021, we were really growing fast from seven to 20 people in one year. And with Stephanie, our chief people and culture officer, we had a lot of this discussion that we will never change this one here. Whatever happens, and if when we grow, let's always make sure that we think, hey, that fits to the culture, it adds to the culture, and also your team, please, Make sure your team has a say on this, who is coming in or not, does this fit, because they have to work with them, usually not only you. So this is a great principle we really liked, and it will al always help uh, for the future. Now this year, with the company, we changed into a new office, right? That's me, confident, smile, ready, of course, excited. And people would say, oh, Yannick, it's so nice, because when, when, I, when I see this, you have a great culture, right? It's, it looks cool, we had a great partner, we implemented all the rules of new work and creativity, but I think your office, of course it's important, but it's rather an enabler than actually the base of your culture, because if the culture is not good, you can have the best office in the world, it will not work out. So in my opinion, there are six very important dimensions that every kind of organization should think about how are we going to tackle this and how are we going to improve this. And first of all, I want to say in the middle is something that is the mindset. And especially, it's a mindset of continuously learning and developing an improvement. It's not just six dimensions where you can say, OK, that's my checklist, done. What's the next challenge for the next year? No, that's not how it works. Every day, every week, every year, make sure you try to develop in those six dimensions. And I'm going to show them to you right now. So here there are six dimensions where you can think about what are we doing there as an organization? What am I doing as a team leader and even as a team member? If you think, hey, that's nice what Yannick is telling us, I'm going to show this to my boss. No, no, you are also responsible in this because you also play a part in your team and your organization. Let's start with clarity, top left. I think that's the most important first thing. In this fast-paced world, in a world where everything is coming in, we have everything on the smartphone, and we're probably overwhelmed by informations and things that, happening, things that are happening, I think we have to make sure as leaders that we have clarity. An easy question, but a very important question is, in the next meeting, ask your team, hey, are we successful? Are we successful as a team or as a company? Interesting enough, you will hear from, yes, of course, we did this and this, from no, when we look at this and this. So make sure, what are your goals and how are you understanding this? Make sure there's a lot of clarity, easy, simple information for everyone, because that helps you and gives you safety as an employee or as a team member. And you know, people like to work in companies that are successful, so make sure they have the clarity on success. Psychological safety. We all know mental health, big issue, especially with young people. We have 53% of the Gen Z that tells us in our service, hey, we are thinking about, or we are struggling with mental health. We're thinking about, am I overloaded or not? So you know they have that on their mind. So make sure you have an open um, communication style. You have this psychological safety where people can open up, share their ideas, share their uh, struggles or their thoughts. That's very, very important that you open that up and you give this psychological safety. Fluidity, the third dimension. Maybe that's a little bit a new word, but it's interesting to think about. We like flexibility, yes, and we would also say, oh, everything has to be hybrid. You know, so two things at once. I think we have to challenge how is it if we have the full range of possibilities? Where do we work? Already in the office. Maybe you're just not at one desk, you have a full open space, you can work in cafes, you can work at home, you can do workations. Like, do it, open it up completely, have it fluid. Um, also think about different roles. Everyone should have different roles, right? 
So make sure that they have different responsibilities, open that up as well, and also think about capacity or just information so that we have a lot of fluidity there. Then, of course, diversity and inclusion. I mean, that's what we hear every day. And it's not just about genders or about cultures. I think diversity also means different mindsets and different kind of know-hows in the project team. I think the best project teams are the ones that are very diverse in know-how, very diverse maybe in generations, and also very diverse from a mindset so you can tackle it. And of course, make sure you can also include or you do include all those people. Very, very important. Fifth dimension, inspiration. We have to be inspirational. We work six, seven hours a day, whatever you do, maybe more, maybe less. Important thing is, and we go there, it should be inspirational. People want to have something they can tell about, they're happy about, they're uh, glad about. If we're not inspirational, if, if we're not inspirational leaders, it is what happening, or what, what happening is that people directly copy that and they're not so happy anymore. They say, oh, okay, we just see challenges instead of opportunities. And the sixth dimension is every decision we do in our company should be sustainable and responsible because as I said, everyone is responsible in those teams and we should create not only the next two, three years, but actually the next 20, 200 years because with the planet, but also with everyone that's working in your company, their families behind it, so make sure this is sustainable. Give your organization a brand is my first tip because if you think, hey, we have a great culture, make sure you bring this out, right? Employer branding, one of the biggest topics in the future, in my opinion, where everyone is fighting for the next talents, give those organizations a brand. Because if you're great, make sure you communicate that on all the different channels. Develop your leadership team. Second tip for me, yes, or for me, definitely important that we develop our leadership teams because we have the baby boomers getting out, we will have new leaders, so make sure they're ready in those difficult environments and challenging environments that we have every day. And the third tip, of course, we have to be champions. We have to be champion in every dimension. We have to be ready for whatever comes up next. We have to be ready and happy and excited about those challenges, although it's not even always easy, I think, we have to do that, and it, it will help us here in Switzerland and on the whole planet. So what I can give you as a last tip is go all in. Go all in. Don't be too risky, but go all in. Be happy. Fight for it, and especially in something that also younger generations, they need to learn that patience is a good thing. You need patience sometimes in life because you will develop this in your company, the perfect culture for the next three months, three years, or 30 years. So my final question is, are you ready to go? I hope so. Thank you very much. <laughs>